a pleasure to welcome you to this edition of NAVDAC and Your Health, that TV program that gives you updates on the activities of NAVDAC, jet towards safeguarding the health of the nation. I am your regular host, Amanda Ugo. Today's edition of NAVDAC and Your Health begins with a joint press conference organized by NAVDAC and the National Primary Health Development Agency to launch Gardasil, a vaccine for human papilloma virus, a virus that affects girl children of between ages 9 and 10 and modalities put in place to administer the vaccine. Also in the second segment, we'll be featuring a press conference where the Director General of NAVDIC addressed the issue of rejection of Nigeria's export and the measures designed to correct this anomaly. The task to safeguard the health of Nigeria is one that bestows on the regulatory agency the responsibility to shut out every form of illness and disease, either remotely or otherwise, and to also work with other concerned agencies and stakeholders to fashion out strategies to curb, manage or eliminate the illnesses and diseases when they inadvertently find their ways into the society. And to a very large extent, NAVDAC has always been proactive in performing this arduous responsibility. The latest of all challenges to the capacity of NAVDAC to deliver on the responsibility is the spate of the human papilloma virus. Bringing the virus under control has been a joint task between NAVDAC and the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. A press conference aimed at giving details of the synergetic efforts of NAVDAC and the NHPCDA, which has birthed a vaccine to tackle the challenge of HPV in female children, was recently held in Abuja. At the press conference, the Director General of NAVDAC explained how deadly the HPV can be and why it is necessary that prompt actions are taken against it. There are some diseases that are silent killers for women, and cervical cancer is one of them. Ovarian cancer is another one. Uh, so having a vaccine is huge uh, to prevent it. What is the disease burden of cervical cancer in Africa? Cervical cancer is a major public health problem in Africa, where it is the leading cause of cancer death among women. According to the World Health Organization, about 119,000 new cases and 81,000 deaths from cervical cancer occurred in Africa in 2020, accounting for 22.5% of the global burden. Nigeria, the most populous country in Africa, has one of the highest cervical cancer incidence and mortality rates in the continent, with an estimated 15,000 new cases and 10,000 deaths annually. Several factors contribute to the high disease burden of cervical cancer in Nigeria, such as low awareness, screening coverage, limited access to treatment, and high prevalence of the human papilloma virus HPV infection. The NAVDAC DG also gave details of the human papilloma virus and its causes. Human papilloma virus infection is caused by a DNA virus belonging to the family papilloma viridae. The variants are non enveloped and contain a double stranded DNA genome. HPV is the most common viral infection of the reproductive tract and causes a range of conditions in men and women, including precancerous lesions that may progress to cancer. There is an urgent need for effective and sustainable interventions to prevent and control cervical cancer in Nigeria and other African countries. However, the launch of Gardasil, a vaccine for human papilloma virus, a major causative factor for cervical cancer on the 24th of October 2023, will bring a deep sigh of relief to the menace of HPV and cervical cancer, which is its offshoot. 
The DG of NAVDAC expressed her confidence in the vaccine to nip the HPV virus in the board. She also explained the regulatory role NAVDAC played in the process of making the vaccine available for public use. Gadasin is recommended for girls and boys ages 11 to 12. Yes, but it can be given as early as 9 years or as late as 26 years. The vaccine is given in two or three doses, depending on the age of the person receiving it. Gadasil has been granted registration approval by NAVDAC in exercising its mandate as stipulated by its enabling law, NAVDAC Act Cap N1 of 2004, and after rigorous regulatory evaluation process for the vaccine. Use of Gadasil as a single dose. Data from in immunogenicity trials, post hoc analysis of efficacy trials, and post licensure observational studies among females have demonstrated that a single dose of HPV vaccine is sufficient to elicit an immune response that provides similar protection as a multi dose regimen against initial and persistent HPV infection. At 18 months post-vaccination, the efficacy of a single dose of HPV vaccine against incidental persistent high-risk infection was 97.5% for the non-valent vaccine and the same 97.5 for the bivalent vaccine. Current evidence suggests that a single dose has comparable efficacy and duration of protection as a two dose schedule and may offer program advantages and is more efficient and affordable contributing to improved coverage. The executive director of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Faisal Shwaibu, also spoke on the health risks caused by the human papilloma virus, as well as the ability of the newly launched Gadasil vaccine to tame the virus. By immunizing girls at an early age, we aim to shield them from the most common HPV strains responsible for cervical cancer later in life. The HPV vaccine has been scientifically proven to be safe and effective in preventing HPV infection and reducing the risk of cervical cancer. I am delighted to stand here with the DG of NAVDAC and our partners and donors to share that this vaccine will be provided free of charge to all eligible girls in Nigeria commencing on October 24, 2023. The executive director also highlighted the benefits of the Gadasil vaccine to drive home his points. The introduction of the HPV vaccine is not just a medical advancement. It is a profound leap forward in our mission to protect the health and aspirations of our young girls. It empowers them to lead healthy lives and become the formidable women and mothers of tomorrow. Also present at the conference were the country representatives of the World Health Organization, the country representative of UNICEF, as well as other partners and stakeholders. The group at the age group which is going to be vaccinated is above our usual under five years. So what does this mean? This means that we need cooperation from the mothers, we need cooperation from the traditional healers, we need cooperation from everyone. The other challenge which we need to address as a country is the issue of misinformation or disinformation. When we have such scenarios, it is actually the role of the media to come on board and support the public to give, support the government of Nigeria to give accurate information and make sure that uh, we dispel all the rumors which can affect this vaccination. I would like to focus a little bit on the misinformation, disinformation and rumors because we know that they are already ongoing some rumors. This is like Lagos, Hogan, Kano, etc. So the evidence at the international and national level shows that rumors and disinformation are based on three main issues. One is lack of information, 
quantity and quality of the information. The second one is concerns about safety. The third one is lack of trust. So I would like to highlight four main like facts. So we all together, as Dr. Fazer was saying, we can really demand this room. And we can really get the young girls, the, the teachers, the parents, the guardians to work together towards having a good intake of HPV vaccination starting next year. You have been watching NAVDAC and your health. The program is not over yet. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back. It's good to know that you're still watching NAVDAC and your health. The mandate of NAVDAC encompasses the regulation and control of the manufacture, import, export, distribution, advertisement, and sale of products such as food, drug, chemical and chemical devices, packaged water, cosmetics, and medical devices. However, at a time before the current Director General of NAVDA came into office, the export part of the agency's regulatory mandate was paid less attention. Even though that has changed in the last five years, the abnormalities that had been in place during the time is yet to be totally eradicated. This is what has caused the embarrassment of having Nigeria's export rejected by countries of destination. To address this and change the narrative, the Director General of NAVDAC met with the UK Food Safety Agency recently. It was the outcome of the meeting that prompted a press conference that took place at the instance of the NAVDAC Director General, Professor Mojisola Adeyeye, recently. The Director General, Professor Adeyeye, at a scheduled side e event, met with the UK Food Standard Agency, FSA during the recently concluded workshop on Nigeria-UK Enhanced Trade and Investment Partnerships. The meeting was hosted under the UK Developing Countries Trading Scheme with the Nigerian delegation led by Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment. The Director General, represented by Dr. Abimbola Adeboye, who is to my right, Director of Port Inspection Directorate, and the Head of Office of Trade and International Relations, engaged the FSA of Food Standard Agency in London on the unabated incidences of reject of Nigerian food products exported to the UK on non-notifications on such rejects and non-engagement of NAVDAC on the matter and the need for mutual recognition of electronic certification of both government agencies of export certifications among others. This is another step in addition to other steps already taken by the DG toward changing the status and narrative of Nigerian food products in the international market. The DG enumerated the identified challenges bedeviling the export process of NAVDAX regulated products. Non-compliance with advisory guidelines established by NAVDAC to encourage participatory exports. Almost all exported food products are processed without the statutory testing by NAVDAC. Therefore, it is not surprising that all the items exported without NAVDAC quality control and safety tests are rejected. Non-utilization of either to free laboratory testing by NAVDAC for export samples coupled with connivance of unscrupulous agents is a second reason. Exclusion of NAVDAC's requirements for its regulated products in the mandatory pre-shipment inspection in the National Export Supervision Scheme, NES, as administered by the federal government appointed 
pre-shipment inspection agents called PIAs. Next is unwillingness of exporters to comply with minimal sanitary and phytosanitary measures required for exports to countries with stringent market access. Another reason is uh, poor packaging, disregard for importation requirements of trading partners, partner countries. Next is penchant for sourcing from open markets for goods that will be exported without any form of minimal safety or quality specifications. Another is unwillingness to invest in pre-export activities that help to ensure sustainable export. And the last one is disinformation on the roles of NAVDAC in the pre-shipment inspection and verification exercise of container stuffing. To rectify the identified challenges and put a stop to the rejection of Nigeria's exports, the DG outlined urgent measures to be adopted. This include immediate inclusion and implementation as a matter of urgency of NAVDAC good manufacturing practices, good hygienic practices, and laboratory testings such as mycotoxin testing or level of mycotoxin testing, pesticide residue testing, and heavy metals. And all these need certification for all our regulated products, be it food, drug, and others by the National Export Supervision Scheme, as administered by the PIAs. Inclusion of NAVDAC in the CBN export proceed form processing is another way to ease the pain that merchants are going through because of loss of investment. I'm engaging very soon with the Controller General of Customs as the new administrator of the Nigeria Single Window Trade Portal to facilitate this. <clears throat> I had earlier engaged with CBN, Trade and Exchange Division, and Federal Ministry of Finance, Home Finance, totally strengthening in-country regulatory infrastructures on exports. And the mechanism that we're going to use include development and introduction of NAVDAC regulations on export. 2022, we have that regulation finished and will soon be available for stakeholders to make comments. The regulation will be hosted on NAVDAC website with e-copy sent to exporters, trade associations, and professional bodies for their inputs and comments within the next 60 days uh, that started from 11th October, it's already there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, 11th October 2023. Another means is registration by NAVDAC of all exporters of its regulated products. If an exporter doesn't have our registration number, we have, if we have not inspected, tested, we will not allow that export to go. This is in addition to the general registration by the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC. Another means is NAVDA's continuation of its awareness and sensitization meetings with export trade operators on its reviewed guidelines on export of NAVDA regulated products. This is also on NAVDA website for compliance. We're going to be working closely with NAVDAC sister agencies. We have tried that actually several times. And major trading partners on safety and quality of Nigeria exports. 
starting with UK and EU. We will, this is part of the efforts to continue the trying and we believe this time is going to work because the shame that rejection of our products brings to us is huge as a country. We're going to have evidence-based national monitoring of pesticide residues as part of continuous engagement with UK FSA, Food Safety Agency, and as a roadmap for the lifting of the ban on dried beans by first quarter of 2024, as a roadmap towards lifting of the ban on dried beans by first quarter 2024. We're going to continue to have engagement internally with CBN, Federal Ministry of Finance, Customs, NAQS, and externally with European Union. With European Union, we are already getting some results. The NAVDAQ DG therefore charged exporters to contact NAVDAQ website to read up and comply with the stated steps on the guidelines. She also emphatically stated that of NAVDAQ's credit, of the hundreds of products whose products have passed through NAVDAQ, none has suffered rejection to date. I hope you have been enlightened and informed. Next week's edition promises to be more enlightening and informative. Meanwhile, if you have any information for us on activities of peddlers of unwholesome food products, drugs, and fake cosmetics, please do not fail to reach out to us. You can reach NAVDAQ via toll-free numbers. For inquiries, call 0700-162-3322. For complaints, call 0800-162-3322. Three three two two. You may also email nafdac at nafdac.gov.ng. If you have complaints about any form of misconduct, you can reach the reforms unit via email reforms at nafdac.gov.ng or call the reforms hotlines on 909 763 or 0909-763-0507. NAFDAQ, customer focused, agency minded. Please note, it is criminal to import, produce, distribute, or sell unwholesome food products, fake drugs, or unapproved medical equipment. Please report these heinous activities to NAFDAQ to help the agency safeguard the health of Nigerians. We'll meet again next week. Stay safe.